Okay guys, welcome to your 10th tutorial and I'm calling this uh, working menus again, or menus part 3. So last time we noticed that if we went into another activity, our menu, our lovely action bar based menu, is eliminated. Oh my god, what do we do? We, we, we can't survive this. So what we're going to do is, there's a trick that I, I'd use. If you want to use the same menu for all your uh, apps, or if you want to put all your uh, code for all the clicks in one location, not be copying code, because otherwise you'd have to make sure that this code is copied across all the different things. You want to make a change, you have to make a bunch of changes, and it just gets really messy. So we're actually going to create a new activity. Okay, and this activity will never be seen by the user, ever. So we're going to create a new class, and we're going to call it base activity. Okay. And our super class is going to be our activity once again. Finish. Okay, so this extends activity. What we're going to do now is we are going to copy and paste these met or cut and paste these two methods: the create options menu and the on options on options item selected. So we're going to cut that out and put it in here. Now, what use is it in there? Now, unfortunately, we don't have our tag string, so I'll just uh, copy and paste that. That tends to happen. I'm going to call this base activity. So now that we've copied out our these here, how are we going to get our menu back up in this thing? Well, if you know Java well enough, you'll know that... See why this here is extends activity? And this here is also extends activity. Now, if you know, if you understand Java, you'll know that oh, what we're doing here is we're overriding in a, in Android app. There's an um, activity class, and we're essentially saying that when this executes, don't execute the code in the Android activity. We're going to override that and execute our own code. So what we actually do here is, if we say extends base activity instead of the main activity. Now, what this means is that now we can get rid of that Android app activity import. Now, essentially what we've done here is instead of having each one having to create on menu code, if we make all our ac activities extend base activity instead of a standard activity, each one of these on creates can be its own the activity is its own. But when the when let's say it wants to inflate the menu, it can't find it in main activity. So it goes back a step to the base activity and goes, oh, there's our menu inflator. We'll inflate that. And, let, and I'll show you how to get around now some menu items. But that's how it's going to do. It's going to go back a step and go, ooh, there we go. There's our, there's our call. We'll call that. That's how Java works. And then when an item is clicked, it's going to go, oh, there's no options. On items option selected method here at all. We don't have it. So it takes a step back and goes, okay, we don't have it again, or we have it in base activity. We're good. See these on resume calls? If we didn't put those in there, it would go on resume. Okay, that's not there. It would step back to base activity and go, okay, that's not there. It's not there. Step back and go to activity, because we're extending each thing, and creating subclasses. So think of it as like a stepping ladder, and you need to put the method, you can put the methods in you need for each one, but if it's not there, the method, it goes steps back up the chain one, and if it's not there, it steps up again, and again, and again. So you can subclass a subclass, essentially. So I think of it as a ladder, and your methods are, st are like stacks in, in each run. So that's what we're going to do. So if we go to our new activity and make it extend base activity. Okay, and I've if it is extends base activity and then we run the app we're going to see that both of our things will have our activities our both activities will have the same menu and it means that we have only have to write the code once for all the clicks rather than having to have all the click handlers in each activity because imagine if you had 15 screens in your app I've had one app I made my app that's on the marketplace I think is 35 in extreme cases, it's just ridiculous. And if you if I have a menu in each one, I don't have to want to have to say, you know, handle all do all this code here several times over. Because it just gets messy and unorganized. 
And then if you're making, and let's say I want to make a change to the menu, you have to go back and change every single menu on each activity. And it's just a pain in the ass, to put it simply. But if we look, if we press press me, boom, we still have our clicks. And if I just overload the uh, emulator with clicks and extend this up, you can see, probably see there, I'll just click it a few more times just to be safe, that we're still getting our clicks. And it's base activity is called, don't forget, main activity has been stopped. But the clicks are being called from new activity and that's being passed up to base activity. So you can see where the code is being executed from. And that is that is the great strength of object oriented programming. And it's one of the great any object oriented programming will have this, but I prefer, I like the Avis framework for it. And this is one of the best things ever. Being able to do this. Now before we go, we're going to just make a quick change. Let's say new activity. We don't want the Facebook icon. Naturally enough. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a copy of this. We, we want a different menu without the Facebook icon. And then we hit paste. Copy of main menu. Nope. We're going to call this uh, new activity menu. Okay, so we're going to make it, we're going to make the same menu icon again. Now, this is our default menu. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually in new main act in this activity alone, we're going to put a custom menu in. Okay, we're going to have to give this activity its own custom menu. So we're going to call this new activity, and have to get rid of that dash. And good. Now, if we go into the new activity file, and we can alter stuff here. So we're going to get rid of the Facebook icon, Facebook action item. And now we're going to hit run. This allows you now to put different menus. Essentially, what we're doing is we're putting different menus on different activities or different menus on different screens. However, all of our clicks are still being handled here because essentially, even though the Facebook can't be called, that code is not invalid. So this is another good strength: is that when you pre when, when the click button is pressed or when a button is pressed. It's going to go through all the tell. It's going to pass in the menu item that was clicked, get its ID, and naturally enough, it won't be Facebook. So this code will never execute in that activity, but it needs to be in the other activities. So this allows us to handle all, every single menu item in one thing. So if we bring up our emulator and it has the activity installed, hit press me, and boom, look, Twitter and refresh are there. But if we go back, Facebook, Twitter, and refresh are there. So that's your menus. It's very, very handy to know to uh, use this extending activity system. It's a great trick, and I actually picked it up out of an Android book, but it's a I, I love it. I'm passing it on to you guys.